Hello, this is Lawrence Lewis. And this is Sister Christian. Today is Saturday, March 28th, 2020. This is the Producers Happy Hour. Two producers on opposite coasts reaching out to our filmmaking and live event community to hear your stories about how this pandemic has affected you, your life, and your work. Your stories let us know that we're not alone. It's important for us to keep talking, communicating, and sharing our experiences and ideas. We love hearing them too, so let us know. Keep them coming. Email us, or better yet, record a one- to two-minute voice memo and send it to ProducersHappyHour at gmail.com. Just follow the instructions on our website, ProducersHappyHour.com. Also, please share the show with friends and colleagues. We want these stories to be heard. So share them on social media or tell a friend or however you got to do it. Send a postcard. <laughs> <laughs> Send a, a flying uh, memo on a bird. What, were the, what was that? A carrier pigeon. <laughs> that, thank you. <laughs> you know, birds with memos. Uh, I can't even. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, I'm doing an imaginary memo taking gesture. <laughs> birds with memos. That's my that's my new uh, that's my new band name. Birds with memos. Okay, so Christian, today we were going to chat with lighting designer and creative director Brian Tovar, but he had a family emergency, and so he had to reschedule. So it's just you and me today. Oh well. We're going to get to know each other even better, Lawrence. <laughs> and uh, apologies to the audience, but, you know, crazy times right now. And he's a parent, so he's got, you know. Stuff. The, the parents out there, my goodness. I don't know how you guys are, <laughs> I don't know how you guys are doing it. It's a lot. So we're sending uh, our thoughts out to Brian. Hope everything's well, and we'll get him back on the show very soon. Yes. Christian, it's Saturday. Um, how are you feeling? Well, I believe my rhythm or schedule is off because I've really started not sleeping at night. So between Uh four and seven or eight is when I've been sleeping. And it sucks because, you know, you're kind of tired all day. But then when night rolls around like 10 o'clock, I'm not tired. (laughs) It's it's, (laughs) right. And so I think that, you know, um, so this is, you know, going into the second week basically, since I got home last Tuesday. So it's been about a week and a half, two weeks of this um, Mm -hmm. trying to figure it out where uh, I'm ready to move into the I am starting to figure this out phase. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's let's, maybe we can get there for you next week. (gasps) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I hope so. Because you you are starting to get on a routine, right? I am. Yeah. And I'm enjoying it. It's been good. And I think you know, we're 10 episodes in, 11 episodes in on this podcast, and uh, I think I've found some efficiencies and, you know, when to write the rundowns and, you know, getting <laughs> thanks to Rob editing the shows, Rob Blumke. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, yeah, it's working out, so it's good. And I've got um, some other uh, little voiceover projects coming in and hanging with friends and, you know, doing all those social you know, internet things, all that stuff. So I'm starting to make sense of it, I guess, in terms of schedule. But, you know, I, yesterday I was listening to our mayor, Eric Garcetti, and, mm-hmm. you know, there's, uh, there's, this is, uh, this is, we're in it for the long haul. I think that um, California for sure and is being the most upfront and vocal about how long we should be yeah. expected to do this, uh, which yeah. again is refreshing. It's refreshing. It also uh, uh, can send you in a dark spiral of depression. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I mean, real- uh, yeah. reality. Mm-hmm. Reality, yeah. He he goes live every every night here at 5.15. I don't know if he's doing today and tomorrow, but weekdays he is. And um, yesterday he had a question saying, you know, knowing what New York's going through right now and what's ahead of them, are we more prepared for what's coming to us than New York is? And he just flat out said, there is no scenario where anyone is going to be as prepared, any state is, or city is going to be prepared for what's happening to New York right now. There just is no scenario where that is manageable. And that we should mentally prepare for that here in L.A. I did. Uh, I, I remember he was going on last night and I wanted to watch it, but something else came up. So that's a pretty devastating reality check. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it may take me a minute to process that because, you know, the healthcare workers here in New York are absolutely 
were unprepared for this are still unprepared because of lack yeah. of PPE, right? And so yeah. if we're doing in what any scenario the best that could be done for what's going yeah. on, yeah. this is going to be a tsunami over the country, not come in waves. Yeah. Yes. Well, <sighs> sorry to lead the show no, off with no. something so <laughs> No, I mean I get it. Like I um I Stupidly watched Contagion last night from one to three we, a.m. <laughs> <laughs> we watched that one of the one of the first days. Right, I uh, feel like a scientist. Started to get real. <laughs> yeah, you feel like you know. Yeah, I watched almost every episode of every season of ER, so I'm pretty certain <laughs> I can do an emergency tracheotomy. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm with confident. a pin, I'm in. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. But yeah, is, contagion. Yeah, contagion, and so um, it it is eerily similar, obviously, it's, to what's happening, yeah. except for you know not quite as deadly, but or rapid. Let's call it. This is a very slow moving, where you may not see symptoms before seven to ten days. Yeah. So it's very slow moving. Um, that at least you could see what was happening. You know, like within forty eight hours of each other. So this is um, oh, that's a big. That's a big chunk of news. I'm gonna have to follow up on that for sure. Yeah. I mean, ha- well, have just... they? Should I dare go down the road of going deeper? Have they said what they're going to be doing with the homeless population? Yeah, that's often a it's a big topic because you know here in LA we have a very that's a, a different crisis that we've been having is the homeless situation that's been growing exponentially, and so that is a big concern how to handle the homeless population. And there is one case of a homeless person who is positive for coronavirus. And so they're trying to contact trace or whatever, figure out where he's been and who he's been in contact with. And it's a tricky moral thing to navigate through, you know, because what do you do? You know, there's talk of setting up trailer camps to put all the homeless people in that are infected or positive. And it's just like, oh, it it just, anything with the word camp in it right now is just terrifying. I mean, it's terrifying, to be honest. (laughs) So, yeah, Um, yeah, have to follow up on that for sure. All right. Well, let's move on to some other topics. Yes. (laughs) Um, Um, Well, we have the subscription challenge right away. Did not do it. No. Next week. Next (laughs) Next week, week, guys. We're going to get to it. (laughs) I know my friend Katie Byron, and she's going to be on the show next week. She's a production designer for feature films. She kind of posted it on her own. She's like, hey, guys, I'm looking at all my subscriptions. Does anybody have an idea for cheaper this or cheaper that? And so I told her about the subscription challenge. Maybe when she comes on next week, she might have done it. Well, that's the we'll new see. deadline then. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We'll just kick it down the road. I know. We're, we're doing the we best we can, We have to do can, it, people. though. No, well, I feel very strongly that I need to do it just because I do too. I've been ordering less takeout or delivery service, even though I know that it can help. I've been ordering less and cooking in more and, you know. Yeah. I now you now have to think about your groceries and a week in advance. Yeah. Because I know, which is very foreign because you know, we're used to being able to text somebody at two AM with an emergency and they answer. <laughs> I know. So, you've, got, you've got it twofold. You're a New Yorker who, who yeah. you know, you guys order out a lot. Every and day. We're also <laughs> in the film I mean, Christopher and I do too, even here in LA, but you know, right. also freelancers, especially in the film business, you know, you're on a job. I remember doing this in my twenties. When I was working on 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 features uh, or TV, and I'd be off, and I'd go, and I'd buy all these groceries and all these vegetables, and then I'd book a gig, right? And I'd and be on rot. something, <laughs> and then all those all that food would just rot in my fridge because you're there for sixteen hours a day and getting fed breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? And you don't feel like cooking. Yeah, I mean, no. I only have so much time, so the things that get priority are you know relaxing. Yes. Because cooking can be an event. <laughs> yes. Priority one is not having a nervous breakdown. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the subscription challenge goes right along with that thinking about uh, not ordering so much and all of that. Like, where can I cut back? So I do think it's important. I should be planning on not having an income for three months. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I should probably I plan on for longer than I don't know how that, we're but. able. I don't know how we're able to laugh at that. But uh, well, laughing at it because uh, they're uh, otherwise we'll cry. Well, it's also beyond my control. 
Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. a great, you know, feeling it's, that I've felt true. the last couple of days is, you know what? It's beyond my control. It's beyond our control and, and we're Nothing all Nothing I can do boat. to change it. We're all in the same boat. Yeah, it's not out of laziness. Mm-mm. It's not because you turned down a job you didn't want to do and now you don't have one. Nope. We've been I mean, through all that. I mean, we're all in that is, together, too. Like, very, uh, very we're different. all forced to stop working right now unless you choose, which I think that you are a valiant person if you choose to work in a grocery store or do the deliveries. Yes. Those, I mean, yeah. those people are, every time somebody brings something to my door, I th- I'm i like, thank you so much for delivering. And they're like, thank you for having yeah. something delivered. <laughs> it's just such gratitude yes. <laughs> there. That, it's like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So unless I decided to do that, I'm not there yet, but um, I can say that uh, I'm not above it. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. Moving on. All right, moving on. So Billboard put out an article uh, yesterday, and it's talking about how the pandemic has and will change the concert business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in less than a week. And these are dates. I know you, you really like dates on this. Starting with the March 6th cancellation of South by Southwest. So it was March 6th that they canceled right. it. And Live Nation and e- mm-hmm. AEG decided on March 12th to temporarily right. stop presenting any concerts. Since then, the live music business went down from 50 million advanced tickets sold, they were going uh-huh. to a very busy summer, a 50 oh, yeah. million advanced tickets sold for all the concerts and, and festivals, and a 30% year-over-year increase in shows scheduled, down to facing a nationwide directive prohibiting gatherings of 10 or more people. Right. So overnight, billions of dollars in ticket revenue and artist payments were frozen in accounts controlled by Live Nation, AEG, and all the talent agencies that barter right. all these, you know, yeah. So because, you know, they, they do all these everything. advances, they do all right. these advances, you know, if it's if it's like nation, people, right, to secure talent, to secure advances. acts, mm-hmm. to secure mm-hmm. acts. Yep. And so, you know, there already is this weird liquidity problem in that industry of like, you know, they need mm-hmm. big cash to secure acts, but then they don't have cash. They're not liquid. Right. So everything's all frozen. Right. So it's a, it's a big problem. And when concerts start happening again. The article says the industry behind them will have changed significantly and venue contracts will be renegotiated to kind of account for all these months of inactivity and brands that sponsor tours and festivals will obviously slash their budgets. And then indie promoters who can't weather the storm will probably shudder or get the credit they need to get through it. But big ones have more power. So it's right. It's a, it's a problem. No, that's a huge problem because, you know, I I filmed a few things last year at a couple of different festivals. And I've certainly been to Burning Man or uh, in my own festivals, like Governor's <laughs> Ball here. And there, everyone, if anyone's ever been to Governor's Ball, you're on an island. You have to take a boat to get there. And it's three days of concerts, right? What happens at a concert is so tactile and, um, yeah, you know... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there's no way you can't touch somebody at a concert, yeah. whether you want to or not. Oh, at a, a festival, little. I mean, a, a concert, sure. Any concert. I just yeah. went to see my friend perform at the Echo days before this all started mm-hmm. to happen, and it was a jam-packed, sold-out show, and we were shoulder to shoulder with, you know, whoever, four hundred strangers. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just it was. It's just like looking back on that now is like, oh my god. I know. I know, I know. Wow, that's a huge blow. To I mean, it's a our, huge blow. Yeah, our heart goes out to our brothers and sisters in those live event concert communities. Seasonal um, workers. All seasonal of them. workers. Yeah, I mean, they they you know a lot of these people make their living just during festival season. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. They go on tour. You know, whatever. So it's 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 rough. And then live events. The uh, Ad Age. I'm going to put a link in the show notes. Has their coronavirus event tracker. So it's a list of all live events from festivals to, you know, conventions mm-hmm. to panels and all that stuff, whether they're postponed, canceled, or, you know, if they're later in the year, maybe they're still scheduled. So right. we'll put that in the show notes so you can track all of the industry events. Have you heard about this, Lawrence? There's a ton of breweries now that are have switched over to, to making their own hand sanitizer to give out. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, I saw a place in Portland, North Carolina, Atlanta, like they're all over the place. And um, they've switched over because it's the byproduct of what they do is alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. So they have it on hand and they started doing it and they say the need is overwhelming, like oh. through the roof. Well, yeah, I can't yeah. get any out here. 
in Joshua Tree. There's none. No, there's none anymore. I have an inside link on <gasps> some, <laughs> but don't, not don't telling anybody. Don't say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you all have you heard too, designers like Christian Soriano yes. yep. mm-hmm. have switched over to making masks. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, Christian Soriano, I guess, went to Governor Cuomo and requested them to be essential employees so that his team of sewers could come in and work. Wow. In a safe That's environment, amazing. just sewing together masks in their workshop. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Nice. Yeah, he saw a need and he made it happen. He went the extra mile to call the governor. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> it's a ballsy did thing. You, <laughs> <laughs> did you see the concept art that's going around on Adweek for brewery-made hand sanitizer? No, please tell me more. It's an article in Ad Age. Jesse Alkire, who is a freelance creative director and a founder of the Denver Ad School, started encouraging his students to use this time to build their portfolios. And he told them, make something silly. And his silly project was making concept art packaging for these breweries making sanitizers. So you got to so click on the link and look at it. They're really cute. They're little bottles. They're plastic with little flip top lid. But they have kind of like Budweiser wrapping around it. Oh, right. Oh, God. Those look really good. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, those. those it's a little really fun cool. stuff to lighten yeah. your spirits. Yes. <laughs> a little fun, playful uh, artwork. <laughs> kind of cool. Yes, after our governor discussion that happens uh, at the top. Yeah. It's okay. So, <laughs> Variety announced Friday that it was setting up a COVID 19 relief fund to support entertainment industry organizations that provide assistance to the neediest during this unprecedented times. So, guys. Yes. Tell me more about this, Lawrence. Variety is planning mm-hmm. to donate a portion of revenue that would have been derived from the television award for your consideration campaigns. Oh, yes. To, oh, to they spend so much money these... on that. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this money will go to support organizations, including fundraising. The article says historically broadcasting cable networks and streaming services place advertising campaign buys through Variety to reach award voters for the Emmy consideration. And so they're going to redirect this money to, uh, you know, benefit um, industry organizations that are impacted by this pandemic. Uh, Whenever you're at a production company, right, that submits uh, or is part of a, you know, that does promos for networks, you'll see and get so many invitations to go. I mean, I think I watched season seven of Game of Thrones in a theater um, leading up to season eight, just because the invitation came in for us to do it to the production office and nobody wanted to go. I mean, they do so much oh, far, right. like so many huge things oh, yeah. for. So that's so a ton many. of money. Yeah. That's really cool that they've decided to do that. Cheers to them. Uh, yes. I don't know if you've seen the flow chart, Christian, that the DGA put out. No. Government support for creative professionals impacted by COVID-19. I'll put a link in there, but it's a flow chart that starts at the top and it says, I have lost all or partial income or I am not able to start a job and I am dot, dot, dot. Choose one of the following W-2 employee, 1099 employee, ah. both 1099 and W-2 or student longtime unemployed worker. Then you you kind of choose your lane, you follow it down and it kind of tells you the different types of aid that you might qualify for. So that's very helpful. So I'm going to put that in the show notes for everybody as well. Also with the link to the DGA's coronavirus resource and updates, you don't need to be a member to access this link. It's got updates for their membership, which you do, but then there's unemployment insurance and accessing government assistance, some links there, and some other resources as well for people to look at. That's a fantastic source. I wonder who put that together at the DGA. Yeah. It's just, you know, a trainee going for it, or if it's somebody like, you know, Rob Jackson or Miles Johnstone. <laughs> like, who's doing it? Who's doing it? <laughs> so. This Buds for the Blues is a new campaign by Budweiser. What they mean by blues is hospital workers, healthcare workers, because they wear blue scrubs typically. So yeah, the spot is called One Team. It's getting favorable reviews. The ad basically promotes Anheuser-Busch. They're redirecting $5 million of its sports and entertainment marketing spend. What they would have spent during all the sports programming that's right. not happening right now, they're going to redirect that money to the American Red Cross to support the fight against the pandemic. So that's pretty interesting. They're also working with their sports partners to make arenas and stadiums available for blood drives. 
I think that is crazy important because I did hear, even the Surgeon General said it, if you're healthy and you don't feel sick, please donate blood because nobody's going to do it. Make an appointment uh, so right. you can go in and, you know, social distancing and all of that. But they're beginning to become short on blood because people are scared to go donate. Yeah. I think it's a valid point. Absolutely. But um, I'm going to make an appointment and go. I'll give up some of this. Awesomeness. <laughs> some of your your power blood. <laughs> yes. There you go. So you're some sister Christian. Sprinkle it on you. <laughs> There's this uh, letter Christian uh-huh. written to the UK from Italy. Did you see this? Um, I've seen, a, I believe, a couple of versions of it. There's a, a really great one, too, of a man who goes through what week one and two was and then what week three and four was in his mind. Yeah. So now he's at week nine and he can say a lot of things, wow. which is hopeful. But yes, please tell me more about the letter they wrote the UK. Yeah, it takes a lighthearted approach at the beginning. Then, of course, you know, it gets a little weighty. But I just thought the stuff in the beginning was was very chummy and charming. Uh, it, you know, it says, this is Italy. We're 10 days ahead of you in this pandemic. Uh, so basically, we're writing you from from your future. And we right. want to let you know what you're going to go through. And it says, first of all, you'll eat. Not because it will be one of the last few things you can still do. You're just going to eat. Uh, You'll find dozens of social networking groups with tutorials on how to spend your free time in fruitful ways. You'll join all of them and then ignore them a few days later. You'll pull apocalyptic literature out of your bookshelves, but you will soon find that you really don't feel like reading any of it. You'll eat again. You'll not sleep well. Christian, that's you. You will ask yourselves, why is this happening to democracy? And you'll have Mm -hmm. an unstoppable online social life, uh, Messenger, WhatsApp, Skype, Zoom. It's cute. It's charming. It's relatable. And it gets a little more sobering as it goes through. But uh, yeah. And I feel like I'm I'm a few more of these than just not sleep, too. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a few. It does show that we are going to go through stages and that everything we feel is okay. If it can take a lighthearted view of that, which it does, is feels nice. Yeah. Did you one more thing, Christian? Did you see there's a video going out, you know, in Italy, everyone's going on the balcony singing and they're all joining in and singing yes, songs I, and it's yeah, heartwarming. Uh-huh. Did you see the one in New York? Was it the ones with the kids looking out the window? Mm-mm. I think there were. OK, so which one was it? Tell it me was more. a guy who went out on his balcony and started to sing and somebody from some other balcony yells, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> The most, oh God. the most New York oh, response a. to balcony singing I've ever heard. Oh I mean, God. I may have raised my window before with a party going on next door <laughs> and yelled something. <laughs> something so, yeah, similar. I, I relate to that, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Good one. Oh, my God. Christian, do you want to get some voice memos? I would love to. So our first one is from Kaylee Phillips, a video producer out of Boston. Let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Kaylee Phillips. I'm a video producer at a Boston-based online furniture company. And my primary responsibilities include concepting video spots for organic social and YouTube pre-roll ads occasionally. Luckily, I am still able to work from home during this pandemic, but I know that's not the case for a lot of creatives out there. And this is a weird time to be a video producer because a lot of our work requires meeting in person. So right now we're adapting and changing our projects almost daily. Most notably, all of our scheduled shoots have been canceled until the end of May, which who knows if we'll be able to pick them back up then or later. So our day-to-day work has shifted from pre-production and filming to more brainstorming. We're brainstorming new content that we can pick up when we are back in office, clearly defining our processes. We're creating onboarding documents, and we're seeing how we can leverage existing footage for recuts or static posts to keep our organic social channels engaging. There's been a lot of meetings on how we should be adjusting our tone and topics that we need to be sensitive to in light of these events. And so there's a lot of thinking that's going on um, going into our social media plan for the next couple of months. My advice for fellow video folks, those who aren't working and those who are and are finding themselves with extra free time, is to use this time to revamp your portfolios, make connections with other people in the industry, virtually please, and getting your resumes in good shape. Uh, It's something that helps me feel productive and will come in handy in the future, hopefully. 
Also, it's okay to be lazy and take care of yourself and your mental health. Find something that you enjoy doing and do it. Right now, I'm taking up guitar, and it's keeping me busy and less stressed about the condition of our world right now. Thank you, Kaylee, for that. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm very happy that you also gave that option as well to just be lazy and take care of your mental health. Because I think that is going to be a big part of our recovery is mental health. And and I'd read another article about how the increase of people reporting issues with mental health are going up because of the situation. So that's that's um, I'm glad you included that in your message, Kaylee. I would like to say too, Lawrence, that there's a few links that we can put up if people are interested where you can get free therapy be through through um, FaceTime or something like that. But you can talk to a therapist about how you feel as well. And we're we will put that in our show notes as well, because I think that is important. Sometimes unloading on a stranger. Holy shit. Yeah. 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 You can say whatever you want. So, yeah, I think it. So we'll, we'll put that up for you guys. Mm-hmm. It's important. Yeah, I, I did some therapy after my father passed away. And one thing I kept finding myself doing is repeating to her what they call the death story. Like, where were you when you got the phone call? Was he alive? Did you see him? Blah, blah, blah. And just like going through. And I had to walk through that experience multiple times with her. And I said, I'm so sorry. I keep telling you this over and over again. I already told you the story. And she's like, no, no, this is a part of the process. You need to right. constantly go through this process just like you you know you've had i'm sure you had conversations with friends like when did you realize this was a big deal and what did what were you doing you know and right kind of what we're doing here on the show it's like were you on a job did your job cancel how mm-hmm. did it work for you just because we need to continually process the chain of events that led us to where we are now Yes, a lot of that happened after 9-11, for sure, yeah. for a very long time. And people just wanted to start on their story, and you would stop, and you would listen, and then you could tell yours. Yeah. It was a huge thing that happened, so uh, this feels normal. What we're doing right now feels yeah. whatever we decide normal means. <laughs> yeah, It feels like that right now, because we're able to talk about it. And Kaylee brought up a good point about mm-hmm. having to adjust their messaging, right? Like, how many ads have you seen? that are just the same old ad that you've been seeing for the past, you know, year. And it feels so tone deaf, right? Like I feel like every single ad. I was thinking that this morning. I feel like every marketer should have stopped every campaign, just hit the pause button on Facebook. You know how to do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hit the pause button and then just go back and just, it doesn't, not everything needs to be addressed, but couch your message with some kind of acknowledgement of our current world situation. I mean, some they're not getting fast enough. Yeah. I don't I don't want to buy that jacket. If you're going to say, <laughs> hey, get ready for summer, 30% off. No, it's not going to, that's not going to work right now. Mm, it doesn't work right now. And I, I feel like I'm getting a few emails that are tone deaf as well. I've definitely been seeing the ads that throw you out of reality. You're like, but this, this feels gross. Please stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, exactly. yeah, yeah, it does. Oh, well, thank you, Kaylee, for your voice memo. Oh, well, plus Kaylee, now she's got to come on and play some guitar. Kaylee, please send Uh, us a video (laughs) memo of your guitar, please. Please, Kaylee. That'll be awesome. (laughs) Can't wait. Next, Matt Cornelison, who is a producer out of Chicago, sent us a voice memo. Let's take a listen. Hey, Producers Happy Hour podcast. What's up? This is Matt Cornelison. I'm from Fun Guy Media. We're based in Chicago, Illinois. I'm the founder and producer of Fun Guy Media. We're a video storytelling company, and we typically work with marketing and brand organizations, usually larger Fortune 500 companies. Well, we do have some work that we've, we're in post-production on, so that's luckily for us during this weird, strange coronavirus-y time, we do have some of that work to finish up. We, we have had s- several jobs canceled. We've had a large ad campaign be pushed off. We've had video shoots canceled. And we've had several other things cancel. Um, we have had some other challenges and problems come up with clients. They're looking for way, new technology, new ways to communicate with their customers. And so they're reaching out to us with some new problems, um, which we're trying to help solve. So we'll see where that leads. Hopefully we'll, those turn into projects and we can stay afloat during all this craziness. Um, but the advice that I have for you know a fellow film or event industry professional during this very difficult time is 
I think you have to, number one, take, it's all about mindset. How can you, how can you maintain a positive mindset? Number two, how do you innovate? How do you solve the new problems? Now their priorities have shifted. Now there's new problems. What new problem can you solve so you can bring some value to your customers? So that's what I would say. And I wish you all the best. And thanks so much for hearing me out on this. Good luck. Thanks so much for the call, Matt. I mean, yeah. he sounds like a fun guy. Yeah, uh, but I'm fun. <laughs> But he um, basically he's kind of saying the same thing. It's like take a minute. Like the the world, your customer, your customers around the world have new problems, and you just need to tweak your messaging a little bit to address that. Otherwise, it just doesn't. It's like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. Exactly. It's uh, it's it's definitely tone deaf in sometimes. But I have seen a rash, by the way. Of I think it's Billy Graham Jr. is coming on and. Um, praying for you Ugh. have you seen these ads? <laughs> they no. are i mean i know and it's just weird because all of a sudden you know the tv's on in the background or something i'll look up and he's like wow i mean there's a lot of uh, that going on too thanks matt and thanks kaylee for uh sending us your stories we really believe that sharing these stories helps everybody feel a little bit closer together and a little bit more connected in these really uncertain times so keep sending your stories in and we'll play them on the show Okay, I want to mention three links on our website at ProducersHappyHour.com. Well, Lawrence, I think the day has come where the two petitions up on our site pertain to the bill yeah. being signed into law by by um, the administration. So mm -hmm. we'll look up a couple of more because I know there's going to be a second stimulus package. There's no way that this money yeah. that was just signed in is going to be enough. So Yeah, there's going to be another one. Yeah. There will be more advocacy that will be needed for that. and. There's also a lot of advocacy that needs to happen both in New York and L.A. with in terms of rent and in terms of mortgages. I wanted to bring up rent um, yeah. to see what so, people are doing out there. Because it's April 1st pretty yeah. soon, right? And rent's due. Now in California, statewide, you cannot get evicted for not paying your rent. Right. So that's come down the pike. But as far as I know, there's no mandate as to what happens once that is lifted right whether you owe the back rent immediately only, right and you, or what like, which is impossible like june 1st you owe what three four months of rent or you're going to get evicted i mean i'm not saying that's going to happen but uh, there's nothing that prevents that at least that i've heard of and then for mortgages a lot of the banks bank of america who has my mortgage they're only giving one month grace period the all the others this is at least for the county of L.A. because this is something Eric Garcetti announced last night. All the other banks are giving three months and Bank of America did not join the pack. They're only doing one really? month. Well, brands will be remembered. Brands will be remembered. That's mm -hmm. a good hashtag. Brands will, brands be, remembered. will be remembered. I think that uh, you, you should consider switching banks. Yeah. Absolutely. And then see, see if they change their tune. Yeah. That, sorry. Karen, can you call so, the bank for Lawrence? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are people doing about rent? Uh, you know, personally, I think nobody should be paying anything. I think everything should be paused. Everything should exactly. be stopped. Mortgages, rent. A hundred percent. Including commercial. And I say yeah. that because commercial every leases. small business that I know in Brooklyn is, you know, paying five to ten thousand dollars minimum a month for their you know 400 square foot storefront yeah i mean that's crazy if your business it's had crazy. to shut down then you can't make that five to ten thousand dollars yeah it, it yeah so commercial rent has to be uh, halted too yeah but i would love to know from anybody out there listening who lives in new york if you plan on paying your rent on april 1st yeah because I am seriously considering not paying it and putting yep. it into save. I, I don't know. I don't know. I know that for sure that a lot of the people who live in my building cannot pay their rent. Yeah. So I just want to yep. know what people think that they're doing out there. Yeah. What's everybody doing out there with their rent or their mortgage? Let us know. Producershappyhour at gmail.com. Instead of an interview today, we thought what we would do is wrap up the week for you guys, just in case this is the first time you're tuning in or if you wanted to go back and catch something. So Monday, we chatted with Anka Tommen, who is an executive producer uh, working in the commercial and TV landscape. And I remember her interview being very inspirational, but also pretty, uh, there, she didn't pull any punches, as they say. <laughs> yeah. 
It yeah. was it was refreshing to be that blunt. It's refreshing. I just chatted with her over text yesterday, and every day she is emailing and messaging all of our representatives, representatives from local level up to the state uh, governor. <laughs> <laughs> and is, is getting responses, is getting responses yes. and fighting for renter's rights, owner's rights. The package that, that is being offered to us for, you know, rent deferment and mortgage deferment is, is not feasible. And she's she's been fighting every day to make her voice heard, which is honorable. So thank you, Honka. It is. And if she would like to submit her like a form type letter that yeah, that you guys could just, you know, type in the representative's name and here's the email and do that. If she has that information, we can happily make a sheet for it. Yes. Yes. I will. So I would, I would happily do that if she wanted to share. Okay. And then on Tuesday we spoke to Cliff Selman from Dallas. He had a lot of energy, (laughs) a lot of positive energy. Yeah. Cliff Selman on the automotive front, he's hearing what brands and advertisers are doing in the automotive space right now, which was interesting and how they're shifting. Yeah. And also had a few tips for actors who may or may not have ever considered voice acting. You know, he gave some tips out, too, for those folks. So it was definitely a very informative interview. Yes. Wednesday was Susan Ruad Anderson from We the People, executive producer. And she she's an amazing executive producer to start. And she already has some ideas of how we're going to come back. Very confident, has such pride in the advertising and, and commercial production landscape that we're resilient. We will be back. We're going to have to change the way we work and already has some ideas on how what those changes look like mm-hmm. and has a positive outlook. And I have to say that I and I've revisited that talk that we had in my mind a few times, actually several times. And I think that her heart and the way she thinks about other human beings yeah. absolutely shows through in the policies that she was mentioning to change. Exactly. Yeah. It was abundantly clear that if you've ever met her or worked for her or or any of those things that she genuinely respects appreciates and is looking out for you and protects the crew. yeah, yeah. she is amazing yeah. so totally. then on thursday we spoke with sarah carter who oh just so much her heart. um spirit <laughs> yes yeah. Right. Like her spirit is so strong and the way that she in everything and the way that she conducts herself is just she's so in tune with herself. Yeah. And yeah. that is something and, that all of us can aspire to. Yes. And the way she's looking on the situation in terms of how blessed she is to now just make her life a little smaller. She's in a fortunate position to be OK and taking care of her family. And her husband's still able to do a little bit of work because he's in post uh, and finding finding the art in this and seeing the blessings in it. It, it was uh, it lifted our spirits. Yeah. Made me think that uh, no matter how hard it gets, I can always be more. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good stuff, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, Josh Jupiter visited us yesterday. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. And I can the one thing that I thought that. In thinking of that interview is regiment and schedule. Yeah, I was thinking grounded. He's grounded. Mm-hmm. He's he's connected. He's walking through this moment and in a very structured way. In a very structured way, but also checking in on himself and allowing him to really feel what he needs at the moment and giving it to himself. You know, do I need a nap? Yes. Do I need to read a book? Yes. And not trying to do too much more than that, right? Really right. check in with yourself and really kind of, you know, this is this is the time. Everyone's saying now's the time to, you know, make yourself a better person. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's just time. Maybe now's not the time. <laughs> maybe now is just time to take care of yourself. Or right? maybe you are a good person. In- right. And yeah. you don't need to be better. So uh, acknowledging that is half the battle, <laughs> believe yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was our week, guys. That was we're our gonna, week. It was a very, gonna, very was exciting a week. week. It was yeah. fantastic. Lawrence traveled back and forth. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got to see two towns <laughs> you yeah. got out in the world. <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, so I think we've accomplished a lot in this week as well. Yeah. And all these episodes are available. They're all archived on our website, producershappyhour.com. They're also still on all the streaming apps, so just go back and pick one to listen to. Uh, The current events might not be as current because everything changed so quickly, but they're there. Keeping all of our creative minds active and talking and communicating and looking forward is healthy and 
the best way for us to get through this together. Yes. Uh, oh, what a great week. Yeah. Came out right. of it strong. I know we were feeling a little bit. I was feeling a little <laughs> down at the beginning. Uh, right. Definitely coming out of it strong. So. Well, Monday's a new day, so who knows? Well, <laughs> that might be it. I have, put- I'm strictly going on calling them all day. Yes. Day and night. There's no, I, I, yeah, Monday through Friday is kind of gone for me. So yeah, yeah, they're all day now, which is great. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. All right, guys, stay safe, stay connected and stay active and please stay home. While you're at home, don't forget to wash your hands. Um, Don't touch your face. I know that it's hard, um, but if you need to call somebody to discuss it, I'm here for you. Um, (laughs) And you know who you are. I'm just saying I'm here for you. Yes. Be sure to send us your voice recordings or your emails to producershappyhour at gmail.com. Christian, how can people get a hold of you directly? Sisterchristianrocks.com. And Lawrence, how do people get a hold of you? People can get a hold of me at lawrencetlewis.com or for voiceover work, voiceoflawrence.com. All right, right. guys. Can't wait to see you next week. Next week. See you Monday. Bye. Bye.